Okay, so we're going to assume we have some laser cavity with a length D, the spacing between the mirrors, and mirror reflectivity, R1 and R2. And I'll say this again at the end, but we use capital R sub 1 and capital R sub 2, both for the radius of curvature and the reflectivity. It's confusing, I know, but that's what the notation is. Uh, so you're just going to have to uh, be careful which one you're talking about and use it in context. In fact, here is the hyperlink if you want to run that. Uh, in the Java app with those created at the University of Colorado. Well, we know the phase of a plane wave, which we're assuming along this longitudinal direction, if you remember your Gaussian beam theory of chapter 3, which we assume the, the wave's going to act like a plane wave. And this is our phase term. We're interested in how the phase changes the distance, so we can ignore the time term for all practical intents and purposes. And we know that in order for the wave to add up in phase, the the round trip, the distance z, is equal to 2d, because that's how long it takes for the wave to recirculate inside the cavity and come back to its starting position. And that multiplied by the wave vector, uh, 2 pi over lambda, needs to be in, equal to some integer multiple of 2 pi, because that's the condition that the wave repeats itself in. And q is just an integer, so let's go ahead and write that down. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3, so on and so forth. Well, this can either easily be rearranged to say that for a given wavelength, if you're going to have resonance, if you're going to have a longitudinal mode, if the laser will be allowed to laser at a very specific wavelength, the length of the cavity has to be that, or the wavelengths that are allowed in a particular cavity, D, are given by that. And so when you look at, as a function of wavelength, the intensity I that comes out of a laser um, on a very, very expanded scale you'll see that you only get certain wavelengths that are allowed to come out of this laser, and you will not get frequencies or wavelengths that fall between these allowed longitudinal modes. And again, these are called longitudinal modes of a laser. They're the allowed frequency given by the condition that in a round trip, the phase of the wave has to be some integer multiple of 2 pi. So let me get another pin here, and have a black and we'll get a ballpoint pen since it's a little easier to write with for fine things. And let's do a, a particular example with this. And so, a helium neon tube, the laser you've been using in the lab, uh, I have one of these with a distance between the mirror of D equal 22 centimeters or 0.22 meters, because I like to work in meters. I know that lambda is equal to 632 meters nanometers. That's pretty straightforward. And in this case, I know that lambda is equal to d q over 2. Um, and I can go ahead and I can solve this for q. And when I put in my value of d and my value of lambda, I find that q is equal to 695,322. Um, and this actually corresponds to a wavelength of 632.8003 nanometers. Uh, if I want to know if I change my value of Q by one more and say Q is equal to 695,323, then I find that the wavelength is 600. 32 nanometers, 0.7994. Um, <laughs> and so very small changes in the area of your value will give me very different wavelengths. What does this mean? The spacing delta lambda between two modes up here. Let me go ahead and erase all of this so you can see this a little bit better. But we're talking about the spacing delta lambda between two different modes is lambda of q minus lambda of q minus 1. And essentially what we're finding that to be is 0 0.0009 nanometers. Oops. And this, in fact, is a very, very small value. And it says for any reasonable length of cavity in the visible region of the spectrum, you're going to create a lot of wavelengths or a lot of longitudinal modes. And they're going to be very, very close, spaced very, very closely together. So closely, in fact, that it's going to be almost impossible to distinguish them without very expensive and, and complex instruments. So we have one of these instruments, and if we have some time, I can show it to you. Um, but you do need to remember that lasers do create 
unique single frequency. So let's just review this before we call it quits for today. We have two types of modes that we talk about. Um, the one we're talking about today in Chapter 6 is the longitudinal modes of the laser. And they're longitudinal because they occur from the wave bouncing back and forth many, many times along the longitudinal long axis of the cavity. And so let's write that these were given in Chapter 6. We, of course, have another different type of mode that we've talked about previously, and we assume you know a fair amount. And those are the transverse modes. Transverse is in, of course, the transverse direction, the R direction or the X and Y direction, what we typically call the longitudinal direction, the Z direction in optics. And these are the modes of a Gaussian beam, of which the TEM00 or mode you see right here is the most prevalent and the easiest one to work with. So make sure you distinguish between longitudinal modes, which are the distinct frequencies that are allowed by a laser cavity and are determined by the wavelength, lambda, and the length of the cavity D, as given on the previous slide. And you'll notice we have a lot of different frequencies that are allowed in here, as illustrated by this cartoon right there, and the transverse modes of the laser, which are your Gaussian modes. Um, <coughs> If you go and you run that application, what you're going to find, in fact, is that you get very, very low amplitude in these regions. The amplitude slowly starts to climb and hits a peak. And it turns out that if the reflectivity of the mirrors is low and the spacing D between the mirrors is small, you get something that looks like this. A small D gives very large spacing between the peaks, but if on a long cavity with a large D, the spacing between the peaks, since it's, of course, inversely proportional to D, uh, gets very, very close together. And we're going to find next time how the reflectivity of the mirrors uh, determines the shape of these longitudinal modes. And we find that what we're going to find out is that high reflectivity will give very sharp, narrow peaks, while low reflectivity will give very broad peaks. And we're actually going to calculate the shape of this in a particular case, because this is actually quite important for how a laser operates as we start to get into the frequency domain description of a laser. And that's all for today.